Hey guys, welcome back to How to Roll Dice. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be doing a review and walkthrough of this game here, Fuse, by Renegade Game Studios. Fuse is a fast action, fast paced dice game that has players working together as a team to defuse bombs on their ship. You have exactly 10 minutes to do so or else the bombs explode, everybody dies and you lose the game. This is a game for one to five players. It's really high action, it's very intense. It, it almost creates a level of anxiety. Um, it's this mad dash to grab the dice and assign them to your bombs and time is ticking down. You're actually gonna use a timer on your phone or a stopwatch, whatever you have to count down 10 minutes. Um, it's a lot of fun. My one big gripe about the game, and it is sort of an issue, is that it's very difficult to win. It's fun to play, it's easy to learn, and it's, it's easy to actually get through the mechanics of playing the game, but it's very difficult to succeed at the game. That might matter for you, or it might not. For me, it's kind of in the middle, it depends on who I'm playing with, really. I don't mind, but my players might. And so it's not a game that's always going to come off the shelf for me. Um, but let's uh, let's get into things here. So looking at what comes in the box, very straightforward. You've got this lovely oversized velvet bag here, oversized, you know, in game terms. It's not like it's the size of a shopping bag, but this lovely velvet bag here with the game name uh, logo on it. That's going to hold your 25 dice. You've got the different dice here, five different colors, blue, green, red, black, and yellow. Those are numbered one through six, and they're numbered with a cool sort of digital clock face numeral that looks almost like something you would see on a standard Hollywood style bomb, you know, big glowing red numbers ticking down. Um, you've got these bomb cards here. I've broken them into three piles because I sort of want to talk about these two types here, the advanced bombs and the fuse cards that I'm going to recommend you not use ever. Um, and then the regular bomb cards. And then you've got the rule book over here. The rule book is pretty short and sweet because like I said, it's an easy game to learn and sort of wrap your head around. It's just hard to do. It's like, you know, if somebody were to explain ski jumping to you, you know, you stand up at the top of the hill, you go down the hill, you go off the ramp and then you land. Very straightforward, except almost impossible to actually accomplish in practice. Getting into how to set up the game. You're going to first look in the book, and you're going to look at the table that's in the book that tells you how many bomb cards you're going to use based off of the number of players that you have, one through five, and the level of difficulty you want for your game. Now, this excludes adding in the advanced bombs and the fuse cards. This is just the number of bomb cards you'll have in your deck for that game. So we always played on the training difficulty, which is the easiest difficulty in the book. Uh, and we played with two, three, and four players. So we tried a good variety. I also had players with varying levels of experience with gaming in general. Um, though for a game like this, I feel like that doesn't matter too much. Um, the, box, the box actually recommends this is fine for players, I think, ages 10 and up, which I would agree with, um, as long as they don't mind losing a lot. Um, so looking at that table, say for example, a three player game says you would use 24 bomb cards. So removing the fuse cards and the advanced bombs, just the regular bombs, you're gonna shuffle the deck of 49 cards and you're gonna pull out 24 bombs face down. You're then going to maybe give those a little quick reshuffle, place the extras off to the side, and you're going to deal each player two starting bombs. Now looking at the bombs in the upper right corner, you're gonna see a difficulty. That's gonna be numbered one through four. Each player of their two starting bombs can only have one bomb with a three or a four. The other one has to have a one or a two. Uh, if both of theirs have a three or a four, then one of them needs to get discarded and you deal them another card. Just discard it, uh, place it back in the deck. Don't discard it. Deal them fresh bomb. Once everybody has two good starting bombs, uh, you're going to take the top five bombs off the deck and you're going to place them in sort of a row of five face up in the middle of the table. And then you're going to place the rest of the bomb deck face down at the end of that row. Those five bombs are sort of the next ones available once players have begun to defuse the two that are in front of them. Uh, so, moving into actual gameplay, you're going to place all 25 dice into the bag, give it a good shake, and hand it to unlucky player number one. Somebody is then going to pop out their phone, turn their alarm volume all the way up, maybe set it to something scary like an air raid siren, and set it for 10 minutes and hit start. That's the beginning of the game. From here on in, there is no pausing, there is no timeout, it's just a 10 minute long mad dash to defuse all of the bombs. Well, not all of the bombs, there is a bit of a bit of a caveat to that. So at the end of the game, as long as that deck and the row of five in the middle of the table are gone, you win. Uh, you don't actually have to defuse the last two bombs in front of you. So in a three player game, there'll be six undefused bombs at the end of the game, two in front of each player. That's fine. Those are considered duds. So on your turn, you're going to take the bag, you're going to shake it, you're going to reach in and you're going to pull out a number of dice equal to the number of players. So in a three player game, three dice. Now this is where I want to make a point on the fact that this game actually requires a bit of tactile dexterity. Um, it's not like your typical card game, even a speed-based card game, because the dice are involved and because there are some techniques around the dice. For example, you might think, oh, I can reach into a bag and pull out three dice. 
But when you're trying to do it as quickly as possible, what if you grab four? Well, now you've seen the dice, so you can't just pick one and put it back. That would be unfair. You have to dump all four back in and quickly grab another three. What if you grab two? Well, now you have to reach back in and pull an extra one out. Well, what if you put, pull two while doing that? Well, now you have four. We'll dump them all and grab enough. If you rush too much, you're going to screw it up. It's very, it's very good at simulating what it might be like to nervously like try to defuse a bomb, you know, with people standing over you screaming. Um, so that's a thing if you're looking for that. Uh, but you reach into the bag, you pull out the correct number of dice, right? If you screw it up, you have to try again. Uh, I'll talk about it in a moment, but throughout the rest of the game, basically any time you're handling dice, whether it be placing them on bomb cards, trying to stack them, trying to figure out who's going to take what and smashing your hands into each other as you reach for them, there's a lot of dexterity involved, and you kind of have to factor that in to whether or not you're going to be able to get this done quick enough. So, on your turn, reach into the bag, pull out a number of dice equal to the number of players, roll them in the middle of the table, another dexterity type thing. Don't roll them off to the side, don't accidentally roll two off the board because then somebody's going to pick them up and re-roll them and all of those seconds lost are going to start to add up to this ten minutes that you have to defuse all these bombs. Very nerve-wracking, people are going to start yelling at each other. Um, you roll them in the middle of the table and each player is going to grab one. Now, you can only grab one that you can assign to one of your two bomb cards. Your bomb cards are going to show the dice that can be placed on them. It might be certain colors, it might be certain numbers, it might be both. For example, uh, you might be able to place a green or a blue or a two or a five or maybe specifically a yellow three. It depends on the bomb difficulty that you have. The more specific bombs have a higher level of difficulty. You might be able to place them in any order. Maybe this turn I'll place one on the left and next turn I'll place one on the right and then finally I'll place the one in the middle. Boom, the bomb is diffused. Uh, some cards actually require you to place them in a specific order. For example, there are some where the die need to be stacked vertically. Um, the nice thing about those is that they look cool. The bad thing about those is there's a rule that says if at any point that stack tips over, maybe because somebody bumped the table or you accidentally reached for a die and smacked your own stack, regardless of how many you knocked over, scoop all of them up and put them back in the bag. <laughs> it's the same as somebody sort of nudging your hand while you're trying to clip a wire and you cut the wrong one and all of a sudden two seconds, you know, two minutes come off the clock and you start panicking. Um, you also have some pyramid stacks where instead of four or five dice vertically, it's three dice except they're stacked two with one on top. Those are a little simpler, but they have the same rule. If they get knocked over, they get reset. You might also have equation type bombs. Maybe uh, the, num the color of the die and the number of the die doesn't matter, but it has to be this die plus this die equals that die. So maybe you place a two and then a three and then a five. Or maybe you place the five and then you figure out how to you know, resolve it. Maybe you get a one and a four. Um, so they're not they're not so structured as far as color and number goes, but there's the equation that you have to have work out in order to um, defuse the bomb. So the dice get rolled in the middle of the table. Each player is going to grab one. You can only grab a dice if you have a bomb card that you can put it on. Your two bombs in front of you. After all the dice in the middle are gone, the bag gets passed to the next player, and you do it again. Well, now hold on, you say. What if there are dice left in the middle of the table that nobody could take because they don't have a bomb that they can put them on? That's going to be a downside. The player whose turn it is has to pick up any untaken dice at the end of the sort of assigning step and re-roll them. And now those turn into negatives. So say for example there's a black dice left over that nobody could take. And it gets rolled and it comes up as a black three. Each player from each of their bombs now must discard either a three or a black die. That really sucks. <laughs> and the discarded die as well as the re-rolled die go back in the bag. Now if you don't have any that meet the need, that's fine. You kind of lucked out. However, if you do, they get plucked, and that resets all of your bombs a bit. And this sort of stacks as the game goes on, because as you've filled in more and more slots on your bombs, there are fewer and fewer dice that get rolled that could fit onto your bombs, because you've already filled up some of the spaces. So you need something really specific at that point, which means the bombs, the dice that get left over, get more and more as people get closer and closer to defusing their bombs, which then resets their bombs somewhat. So it's this kind of two steps forward, one step back, except it's more like a six steps forward, five steps back. It's slightly more frustrating. Um, not frustrating in a bad way, but frustrating in a like pulling your hair out, this game is fun, but I hate it kind of way. Um, so you re-roll those, anybody plucks a uh, die that needs to based off what gets re-rolled, all that gets put back in the bag, and you pass it along. Prior to the re-rolling dice step, if anybody's filled up a bomb, filled up all the dice spots on a bomb, that bomb has been successfully diffused. Place that bomb off to the side in a discard pile, take the dice that were on it, stick them back in the bag. Grab one of the bombs from the row of five in the middle of the table and pull it in front of you, because you always have two bombs in front of you, and then replace that empty spot in the row of five with one from the deck. 
remember, as soon as that deck and the row are gone, the game is over, you've won. You don't have to defuse the final two in front of you. So you go around the table like that, trying to defuse bombs, grabbing dice, re-rolling the dice that didn't get pulled, throwing away the dice that get eaten by those re-rolls, and trying to defuse all of the bombs. You have 10 minutes. And again, in a three-player game, at the easiest possible difficulty, the number of bombs that you would have in your deck is 24. And as I said, I've played with two, three, and four players, uh, always at tutorial, dif or always at training difficulty, easiest to difficulty. And out of, I wanna say 10 games, I've won once. And there was maybe 12 seconds left on the clock, and that was it. All of the other games, we were dead with not even half the bombs cleared through. I think at best, on average, we've gotten maybe two thirds of the way through the bombs uh, bomb deck. So you're talking about, you know, you have your five on the board and maybe five or six left in the, uh, the deck and everybody still has two in front of them. Um, it's a fun game. I love how fast it is. I love how intense it is. It's very immersive because you immediately get into the mood of, you know, you feel like you're trying to defuse bombs. You feel like, oh God, we're running out of time. Like, no, I can't take that one. Crap, reroll it. Oh no, that resets this. I was so close. No. And then it just, it keeps going like that. It doesn't stop. It's a heart pounding 10 minutes, but you don't often win. It's usually, you know, I'll, I'll look at the board and I'll look at how close we are. I'll look at how many bombs are left and then I'll look at my phone and I'll go, oh, three, two, one, goodbye everybody. And that's it, just, it goes off and that's it, you're done. Um, it is fun when everybody starts like, you know, saying goodbye, you know, it's been an honor and shaking hands when there's like five seconds left on the clock and then you all just watch it tick down and that's it. Because a lot of times there's no point rushing, you know, if there's, if there's still five bombs laid out plus three left in the deck and there's 10 seconds left on the clock, no, there's no, it's not possible. You, you've lost, you know, have a fun moment, say goodbye to each other, you know, somebody play the, somebody play the sinking song from Titanic with the, you know, violinists on the deck. Um, so that's kind of the fun part to losing. But if you have a group that likes to win or wants to succeed or wants to be able to get to the point where they're good at a game, I don't know if you can ever do that with this one because no matter how fast your hands get, there's a there's an element of randomness to it. It's the color that you pull and the numbers that you roll. It just might not be what you need. And you can't do anything about that other than try to go faster and you can only go so fast. And again, we're playing on the easiest of five difficulty levels with still the option to add in advanced bomb cards that are more difficult and fuse cards, which are basically reset actions. So it, there's just a lot of difficulty to winning this game, even at its easiest setting. So I wouldn't recommend it to anybody who requires the ability to win or master a game from their, you know, from whether or not they enjoy an experience. Uh, so real quick to wrap things up, let's do a quick little review with the nice little review board over here. So first off, we have theme and immersion, solid two. Absolutely, you get sucked right into this. You feel like you're scrambling around a ship trying to save yourselves by defusing these bombs and having a hell of a time do it. It, doing it. It immediately pulls you into that sense. It creates a feeling of anxiety, of stress, of, of terror almost, if you try to keep in mind that your lives are depending on this. Uh, and make sure you have the clock face up where everybody can see it. Maybe even get a nice little mount for it so it faces all the players. Set the letters to red if you can. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. So theme and immersion, solid two. Uh, cost versus quality, it's a cheap game to pick up. It doesn't have a ton of components to it, but I feel like what it does come with is well worth it. So I'll give it a two there. It's a little bit of a gimme because it's not much of a fanciful game as far as its components go, but it's a small box game. Bring it to a friend's house, bring it on the road, stick it in the backpack. It's not pricey. It's, it's, you know, it's well worth its weight. So we'll give it a two there. Ease of use, super simple, straightforward. Um, the one thing that kind of popped into my mind while I was going over this review is if you did have somebody with any kind of a physical disability with their hands or their arms who can't move quickly, um, like any shoulder pain or anything like that from all the lunging, um, it might not be the best game for your group. I don't want to knock it down on score there because of that, but be aware, like I mentioned, there's some dexterity involved in this game, moving the bag around, quickly shooting your hands out, you know, reaching in and trying to just be quick. You know, it's not like you're jogging or anything like that, but you need to be able to have a little movement to you, you know, it's a little jerky. So I'll give it a two there with a with an asterisk. Um, moving on to enjoyable. I'm gonna have to give it a one. It's very enjoyable to play. But again, if you base your level of enjoyment of a game on whether or not you can succeed at the game or whether or not you can increase your skill level at the game or your, your level of mastery of the game to a point where you feel like you, you get it, you have a strategy, you have a theory, you have tactics, there's none of that here. Um, so I'm gonna give it a one. I like it, some people won't. 
Um, and then lastly, teachable. It's very teachable, very easy. I mean, you I, you almost don't need the rule book. I could write it down on an index card. It would take up three or four lines. You'd be good to go. It's not a hard game to understand. Like I said, it's just a hard game to do, to, land, to like succeed at, that's it. So, total score of nine, pretty solid game. I like it, I would recommend it after explaining how it works. I would never just say, oh, play Fuse, it's a great game, you'll love it, go grab a copy. Because you don't know if somebody's gonna hate that aspect of it. And maybe you're better at games like this than we are, but I feel like considering I tried it at different player levels on the easiest setting with none of the advanced cards and almost never won. <laughs> One in 10 times we won. Uh, I think there's going to be people that don't like that. I think there are gonna be people that don't care about that. But I can't just say, buy it no matter what. It's perfect for everybody. It's not. It's a good game. I like it. I would recommend you give it a try. I would recommend you buy it if you don't mind the fact that you probably won't win at it that often. But other than that, I will say Fuse, great game. Nine out of 10. Um, yeah, hope you can try it. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review. If you haven't yet, please go down below, click on subscribe, click on your little bell, and set it to all so that you get notifications whenever I post new videos, which hopefully will be consistent and often, but we'll see. Um, if you want to leave a comment down below, I'll try to comment back, I always do. Uh, and leave a like or a dislike so I know if you guys are enjoying these videos or if you hate them and you want me to change everything. Maybe I'll turn this into like a freestyle rap channel, who knows. I won't do that, that's not going to happen. Um, but anyways, have a good night and I will see you in the next video.